I'm Jennifer Delacuadri, and this is the Raising Happy Teens podcast, where you learn how to successfully guide your teenager into adulthood without losing your sanity in the process. Let's do this. Welcome back to the podcast. I talk to a lot of parents and I talk to a lot of teenagers and something that comes up with both over and over is how strict parents are. Parents wonder if they are too strict or if they're not strict enough and teens think their parents are too strict. It rarely goes in the opposite direction. Like, I think my parents aren't strict enough. (laughs) I don't really hear that very often. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about it. And remember, this is a zero judgment zone. So with anything I say in my podcast or in my coaching, I am helping you become more aware of your patterns and decide for yourself what you want to do about it, if you want to do anything at all. So listen to what I'm saying, reflect upon it, see how it resonates, and then make a decision about how to proceed. You are in charge of your own behavior and your own life. I'm here to inform and to help you make decisions. In psychology, let's start first. Just what is what does it mean to be strict? In psychology, strict parents are defined as parents who place high standards and demands on their children. Now, if that was really just the definition, it would be like, well, I guess every parent is strict. <laughs> so let me break it down a little bit. There are authoritative and authoritarian parenting styles. I've talked about this in the, on the podcast in the past. And I want to first talk about the authoritative parents. So those are the parents who have high standards, but they also are warm and responsive in supporting their kids. So they value independent thinking and they encourage their teens to challenge the rules or at least provide feedback. Authoritarian parents, they're less supportive. They're less responsive. And the rules that they create are often overly strict or just arbitrary, just making rules to make rules. And they don't allow their kids to talk about what they think about any of the rules or question any of the decisions that are made. They don't have any input. And so when I'm speaking about overly strict parenting, it's generally referring to an authoritarian style of parenting. But know that there's a spectrum when it comes to parenting. You can be on any area of the authoritative authoritarian spectrum at any time, depending on the situation. So if there's something going on, you may lean into authoritarian, even if you're mostly authoritative. So when you hear that, you're like, oh, I'm not overly strict. But sometimes you might be, and you just don't even realize it. So if you're listening to this and you're questioning, am I or am I not, just pay attention to the overall picture. When do I show up like this in my life, in my parenting? When would I like to shift things? When am I happy with my responses to things? Here are some signs that you are or that a parent is overly strict. The first is there's just zero tolerance for rule breaking. There's little to no room for mistakes. The second is your teen has more restrictions than other teens. And this can be tricky because it's subjective. A lot of teens will come to their parents and be like, well, everybody else is allowed to do this and I'm not. And so that may feel like, gosh, everything I'm doing is more than other parents. But be open to the idea that maybe it's going on and just consider and be open to it. Another sign is that there is just little patience for silliness or fun or lightheartedness. It's always task-oriented, get things done, achieve, do, and checking in on those things. Another one is that there's just a really long list of rules. There are so many rules around everything, around their schedule, what they eat, their grades, who they hang out with, where they drive, if they drive, what they drive. There's just rules about everything. Another one is that there is not a lot of room for natural consequences. The parent is stepping in all of the time to reprimand or to intervene instead of allowing the teen to experience what's to come for their 
decisions and choices. Another sign is nagging. So if you're nagging a lot, everything from where to do homework, when to do homework, how to clean your room, when to practice piano, constant nagging may be a sign of overly strict parenting. Another sign is constantly handing out directions. Things like sit up straight, quit dragging your feet, don't slurp, turn in your assignment, constantly handing out directions and just what to do, what to do, what to do. Another one is not offering choices or discussion about decisions. It's like, this is the decision, end of story, book closed. Also, not letting the teen do things their way. It's like, I know the right way, you need to do it my way, or you're doing it wrong. Another example is praise outcome instead of effort. So someone, the teen is working hard, Instead of praising that hard work, the parent is waiting until the A is achieved to praise it. You can hear my husband talking in the background, and I want to say something to him, but I can't because he's just upstairs, and I don't want to interrupt the recording. So this is what happens when you work from home, and your husband has a loud voice. <laughs> Back to the praising the outcome and not the effort or just the outcome, focusing on those outcomes or the results of what it is the teen is doing or is not doing. Another one is to make outrageous threats. I know I've mentioned the series Modern Family before, but it always brings me back to the episode where I think it was a Christmas episode and Phil decides that because something happened, he's just going to take Christmas away. We're not having Christmas. And it's like, Claire is like, what, wait, what? And she wants to support him, but she's like, this is just a little over the top, right? So having just these outrageous punishments or threats, another one that's just a little bit more like every day is clean up your room or I'm taking your electronics for a month, right? Just some arbitrary, random, outrageous threats. And the last one I'm going to mention is the focus is always on learning. Like, what did you learn from this? What's the outcome? It kind of goes back to the results thing. What's the positive? What's the benefit for this? Instead of just having fun and, and enjoying experiences for the fun of it. And I also want to talk a little bit about strictness as it applies to school performance and grades and also dating. Because a lot of parents, they may not be strict in general, but when it comes to grades and when it comes to dating, it's a completely different story. So first, let me just talk a little bit about strictness when it comes to grades. So parents who are overly strict when it comes to grade is they equate good grades with future success. So the better the grades, the more opportunities, financial stability, and well-being. Grades are basically a sign that their teen has potential. And this comes up so much with a lot of the parents that I talk to because they want what's best for their kids. They want their kids to get good grades because they believe good grades is going to equal a happy life, right? But I want to challenge that. That's not necessarily true for everyone. Yes, it could open some doors, but that's not a blanket statement for everything. Also, when it comes to grades, they think that being like having high standards for grades is going to motivate your teen to get better grades. And maybe it will because your teen doesn't want to suffer the wrath of you grounding them because they get a C. So they'll work hard, but at what cost? Also, and also I just have to say that it doesn't motivate your teen to do better and it doesn't give them intrinsic motivation, but side note, I'm going to set that aside. Okay. Also, now there's my dogs. Isn't this, isn't it fun working from home? Okay, I'm just going to talk over them because you can pretend like you're at my house. <laughs> okay, they, parents are so overly strict with grades because their teen's grades give them a better sense of their self-worth as a parent. Like, if my kids are getting good grades, that reflects upon me well. Like, I look good because my kid is the top performing kid, right? So that may be one of the reasons why parents could be overly strict in grades. They're looking for that validation. And another reason is overcorrection. So 
maybe when they were growing up, the parent was growing up, their parents didn't really get involved. They didn't really check in on grades. They didn't really encourage them to do well. And they are dissatisfied with the outcome that they have. And so as a result, they're like, I'm going to be the opposite. I'm going to have high standards for my kids so that they do feel good with their outcome. And now I'm going to shift gears here to dating because this is the other topic that some parents can end up being overly strict on. And here is a few reasons why. One is they're worrying about losing control over their teen. Because when teens start dating, it's kind of like this shift into an adulthood. And it's scary for parents. Like, they're growing up, they're forming this romantic relationship, and I don't have control over that, and that's scary. Also, they may be worrying about distraction from responsibilities, and rightly so, right? You all remember what it was like to have your first love. That's all you can think about. That's all you care about. You don't care about school. You don't care about your job. You stop hanging out with your friends. All those things can happen. And so there's a lot of concern about that. Another is safety concerns, making poor decisions, having unsafe sex, getting in, involved in peer pressure, and also fear for emotional hurt. I don't want my kid to be hurt, so I'm going to keep them from dating. Another reason is just protectiveness over their role. So worrying that somebody else is going to come in and take their place. And that may sound weird because it's a romantic partner, but there's this connection between parent and child and parent and teen that can kind of get pushed to the side when there's a romantic relationship that starts to form because the attention from the kid is starting to go to someone else. And that can be hard for some parents. Another one is concerns about the values, the family values, and how they're going to be tested. Just because there's this thing hanging out there that could potentially lead your teen astray or lead your teen to make choices that they may not have made otherwise. Also worrying about, are they old enough? Is it the right time for them to be starting to do that, right? Making sure that it's not too soon. And the last one, I kind of mentioned this before, is protecting them from being hurt. So they're thinking about a lot of the times the parents I work with, they think about their past and like I had these relationships when I was in high school or you know, when I was young and they were really harmful for me and I really want to protect my kid from experiencing that because it was so hard for me. Remember, all of these things are completely understandable and natural. We only know what we know. So if you're hearing any of these things and you're like, oh gosh, that's me, I'm doing that, it's okay. Again, this is your opportunity to look at it and decide, is this something I want to continue doing? Is this something that's benefiting me and my relationship with my teen or not? And then you can decide what you want to do next. So now I'm going to dive into how teens who have overly strict parents often feel. And this might be kind of hard <laughs> to hear, especially if you're wondering if you're becoming an overly strict parent or if you're a little too stringent on some things. One of the things that some of the teens that I talk to that they feel is that they feel like they have to follow a ton of rules. Like there's just so many rules placed upon them and it, it's hard for them to even keep track. Another one is that they feel like their voice doesn't matter. Like what they think, what they want, it just doesn't matter and it's not even heard. Another thing that a lot of them feel is just inadequate. Like I guess I'm just not somebody who is allowed to think what they want to think or do what they want to do, I don't measure up. Another thing that comes up a lot is they feel like their external achievements matter more than their internal experience. So their grades matter more than how they feel inside about their life, about themselves. Another one is they just feel like they don't have any autonomy or any privacy. Their parents are all up in their business. Like, I just need some space. And in fact, they start pulling back as a response, which makes the parents sometimes start to control more. I know I've talked about that a lot on the podcast. Also, fear of making a mistake. This is where some teens can really develop some perfectionistic tendencies because they're so worried about doing something that's less than perfect. So they just avoid making mistakes at all. They put a lot of pressure on themselves. Or they avoid doing anything that may lead to failure. Another one, and this is a big one, they constantly feel like they're letting their parents 
down. And they're not going to share this with you because they may have some shame around it. But they just feel like, my parents never feel like anything I do is good enough. I feel like nothing I do is good enough, and I'm just completely disappointing them on every turn. And then other things that they may feel is just unloved. And of course, emotional stress responses like anxiety and then also sadness, being fearful, all of those come along hand in hand. Now let me talk a little bit about why parents are stripped. So you may be hearing this and thinking, I'm like that, but I'm not really sure why. Or why would some parents do these things? It doesn't make sense to me, right? But there are some really valid reasons why this would happen. The first one is just a need to control. And having a kid, for some people, that's the one thing in their life that they feel like they have control over, over their future and their choices in their relationship. And again, through the teen years, the teens start to pull away and the parents feel like they lack control. So they lean into the control. I'm going to control. I'm going to control because it makes me feel safe and secure in my body to be able to control you. But now you're pulling away. So it's just an, an overall need for control. Whether it's that they don't have control in their life and they're looking for a place to control something or they have control in everything in their life or they think they do. And so the teen is just another thing that they're going to be controlling. Another really big one is culture. There's some cultures in this world where high demands for obedience and conformity, they're just more common and reinforced. Cultures like Latin America, Asia, and India, I have a lot of parents from these communities who come to me because they've been raised a certain way and they don't want to parent their teen that way. They see how it was, they know how it was, and they don't want to repeat these patterns into their relationship with their teenager. But it's hard for them because they don't know any different. And it can also be really scary because they're in social circles where everyone's kind of parenting like this. And so they may feel like an outsider or they may worry that they're going to be judged by these other parents in the community because they're not being hard and strict on their kid for these things. So know that if you're part of this community, that's really common. And of course, it's going to be scary to break those generational patterns. Another one is just inflexibility. Not being willing to see or be open to other viewpoints or other ways of doing things, even if there's evidence that really prove that to be true, like contradict what you're doing. I'm just not going to be flexible with it. I'm just, this is, this is the way I'm going to do it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay, next one is emotional instability. So when the parent's feeling dis distressed or dissatisfied with their life and they're feeling inadequate, that may rub off on how they show up for their teen. Another one is just a lack of positive parenting skills modeled to them. So how they were raised. They don't know any different, right? You don't know until you know. A big one is perfectionism. A lot of the parents I work with are straight A students. They got the right job. They went to the right college. They were in the right sorority fraternity. They were socially, you know, really strong, had good friends. They have the house, they have the car, and their kids are a reflection upon them, and therefore, they need to get an A-plus in that, too. That's really hard. You can't get an A-plus in being a parent. There's no grading in parent. Sorry to tell you. I'm not your instructor, and I'm not going to be giving you a grade, I promise. And the last one I'm going to mention is low socioeconomic status. And this could be whether they want to shield their teen from potential dangers in the community that they live in. It's an unsafe environment. Or in response to their own high levels of stress and anxiety that they're carrying. So let me move on to some of the things with kids who have overly strict parents, some of the things they may struggle with. It's kind of a laundry list, but I'm just going to list it off. Low self-esteem, poor academic performance, inflexible thinking, just like their parents. Untrusting of authority figures like teachers or police officers. A lack of emotional regulation, so they're not able to keep their emotions in check. And that also leads to aggressive and 
aggressive behavior and just anger issues. A lot of the parents who come to me, their kids are freaking angry at them all the time. It's constant fighting. And it may not be because of overly strict parenting. It may not. But it definitely doesn't help when you're trying to pin your teen down. That can lead to some really anger, angry, aggressive behavior. Another one could lead to mental health struggles, depression, anxiety, substance abuse, suicide attempts. It can also lead to poor social skills. Teens with overly strict parents can be less resilient, more rebellious, more sneaky, less motivated. Bullying, being the bully or being bullied. Authoritarian parents raise bullies. You see it in movies all the time. I think about movies in the 80s where you know, there's that jerk guy and he, the whole movie you're just like seeing him be a total jerk to everybody and then eventually it's revealed that his parents are jerks. Of course he's going to be a jerk, right? And then the last one I'll mention is just not such great relationships, whether it's social or romantic relationships. So you hear this and you're like, maybe I'm overly strict in some areas. Maybe I want to shift some things. How can I do that? Here are some ways to do that. The first is just to own it. Take ownership of the behavior, your, your role, and what's happened, past decisions. Just I own that that's what's happened, that's what's gone on. The second is to just embrace your changing relationship with your teen. It's evolving. They are growing up. They will become an adult. They're going to move out of the house. It's okay. It's time to start embracing that change. Another one is to practice being more flexible. So let go of the my way or the highway mentality. I remember one time when my kids were just really little, I was you know, waiting for a doctor's appointment or something, and I think you know, my oldest was probably two. And I was sitting across from a woman who had older children. She was probably, they were probably already out of the house. And she gave me some unsolicited advice, which usually I don't really enjoy. But this one was actually pretty good. She said, never say I said so. Never say I said so, because I said so, right? Because you never want your kid to get the impression that you're not open to hearing what they have to say or what they think about it. Never make those rules just arbitrarily. I heard that and I was like, well, that makes sense. You know, I was already on board. I'm like, sign me up for that style of parenting because that's me. <laughs> but if you say because I said so, maybe rethink that a little bit. Practice flexibility. Have an open mind. The next one, I say this all the time, manage your stress. Find outlets for your stress. The more stress you're carrying, the harder it's going to be for you to be flexible, for you to kind of go with the flow of your relationship with your teen, the ups and downs. Another really helpful one is to surround yourself with parents who parent the way that you would like to parent. So if you're around parents who are overly strict and you are feeling like you, that doesn't resonate with you, see if you can align yourself with parents who are less so. And another one, of course, is to find support. Because it's not easy to do this alone. It's scary. It's hard. Because it goes against everything that feels right and familiar to you. And so when you do it, especially if it's something that's been generationally handed down to you, a parenting style, it's like, oh gosh, if I don't do this, what if? What if my teen doesn't go to college? What if the wheels fall off the bus? It's super scary. So it's really nice to have someone by your side to kind of reflect back to you and help you be more intentional with your decisions. This is something I do with my clients all the time, of course. So reach out to me if you are interested in learning more about my parent coaching program. I would be happy to support you with this process. So thank you so much for tuning in this week, and I will see you next time. If you liked this episode, I'd like to invite you to join Raising Happy Teens, my free online community for parents of teenagers, where every week I host Ask a Coach. You bring your parenting questions, and I provide expert advice and coaching. Click the link in the show notes to join today. I'll see you inside.